subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel inch super retina display that's an amoled panel dual 12 megapixel 4k 60 fps cameras and you do have a 12 bionic 4 gigabytes of ram and that's combined with a 3174 milliamp hour battery now the first thing you're going to notice when you pick up the 10s max is just how premium and heavy it feels and dense in the hand off to the left you can see we do have our volume rocker as well as our silent switch on the right we do have ourselves a dual sim slot as well as our power siri button and the camera hump did get a little bit thicker from the past now there is no fcc branding so very clean iphone logo at the bottom on the rear and that apple logo is behind the glass once again and there is that camera again now that camera does have smart hdr and bigger pixels so it does have a noticeable improvement over the iphone 10 of last year now the front is dominated by that 6.5 inch oled display manufactured by samsung lg on some of them and that notch still does exist here for the iPhone XS Max series, so it is what it is there. Now at the bottom, there is no chin on this device, and you could see that that pretty much brings it almost all screen, but we still have to get rid of that notch for more innovation. Now we do see some very quality premium buttons here off to the left, these volume markers and silent switch feels as premium as ever, and so does that power button. And for travelers, you're really gonna love that dual SIM slot there for the XS Max. Now at the top, you can see there's not really much going on in the way of the top except for that antenna line at the bottom we do see ourselves that speaker as well as that proprietary lightning port and we do see ourselves a microphone and another little antenna line that antenna line is just a little bit different from the prior versions now the iphone 10s max is so thin that i do recommend you getting a case but it's definitely heavy and that is ultra felt in the day to day. So this phone, put a case on it if you wanna protect the investment, it's gonna be over a thousand dollars, so I don't know why you wouldn't. But in terms of its portability and pocketability, this phone is gonna definitely require some decent sized pockets. You know, I'm like 6'4", and this thing barely fits in my pockets, and that's pretty big jeans there. So here is in my smaller pocket, you can see it sticks out, and that probably would emulate what like maybe some ladies' pockets would do, or even some guys with smaller jeans, you can see, in the pocket of my jacket just fine though but throw it in a bag now in terms of that display this is that super retina 6.5 inch and this is basically why you're buying this phone it is a samsung oled panel tuned by apple to be much more color accurate for people who like color accuracy and wide color gamut things like that you can see these live wallpapers hide the notch quite well so i think this is kind of maybe a hint that apple wants to go all screen eventually but now we're just not there at this current time one thing you will notice about the 10s max that i didn't really like from the 7 plus or the 8 plus is you can't rotate landscape icons but some of the applications still do it but just not on the home screen now reaching the top of this phone is pretty difficult but the brightness levels are rather good so whether you're outside or indoors you're going to really like the brightness levels on this oled panel now you know like the reach to the top like i said is pretty difficult but side to side it's not so bad but this phone doesn't have any way because of ios limitations to put the icons wherever you would like on the screen so you're going to definitely be using this reachability mode found in accessibility settings for the iphone so be prepared. I mean, if you're buying this phone, you should know what you're getting into. It's a big phone, and more than often times than not, you're going to be holding it in one hand and scrolling and swiping with the other hand. Now, this guy does do beautiful HDR10 video. The notch sometimes cuts into your content, but like I said earlier, I'm not so bothered by this because of how big the display is on the Max, and you can pinch back down to get more of a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But this guy cannot do... 1440p hdr but it does do hdr video which i haven't seen on some other iphones before so the video looks fantastic i think most people will be just fine with what this offers now in terms of the photo viewing experience i find that again because of the big display i don't really care that the notch cuts into this one so much but it's just really good to view your videos and photos on here versus like maybe a small camera that you would shoot with like a canon camera with a three inch screen it's beautiful to view these things on this device if you love to read you also like how tall the display is because you don't have to do as much scrolling here because of how tall the iphone XS max is so reading is a joy especially with the true tone and you can change it to darker text and get more of a higher contrast ratio on that white because you have deeper blacks because of the oled technology in this panel so reading is a joy and that 120 hertz sample rate that's a touch rate not a refresh rate 
does make this thing feel very smooth. Like it's the smoothest phone I've felt all year long. That's how smooth this phone is to respond and everything you touch is just super accurate, super fast and it feels extremely smooth. So this display is definitely gonna feel like a nice upgrade if you're coming from anything but an iPhone 10. Now, in terms of just watching those videos that you do shoot with that camera, it's also super enjoyable here on this 10s Max. Overall, I think that anyone who gets this phone is getting one of the best displays in the entire world, so you're gonna be extremely happy with this. The iPhone XS Max comes with iOS 12 to boot, and this is a much better experience than buying a new iPhone last year with iOS 11, as this software is pretty much bug-free, and that's pretty much the best thing about it. There are some new features, but this is a refinement year for iOS after many complaints last year with iOS 11. You have a screen time here, which allows you to monitor your screen usage if you think you're using it too much, or maybe you wanna monitor your kid's usage. You can see Siri shortcuts, as well as display zoom options, which were previously only found on the Plus model. So if you had an iPhone 10, you didn't have that, or even a 10s. Now you can see the calendar, for example, you can do these more split screen kind of applications in the iPhone XS Max. And Safari does show a little bit more content than the smaller version of this device. But on the whole, I would just say that the iPhone XS Max, everything just feels like it's just a larger experience versus like you actually taking advantage of that display. Now, iOS 12 also brings Memoji as well as updated Animojis. If you wanna see more about that, I released an official iOS 12 video. I'll leave the link down below. True Tone also makes its way to the software in the iPhone XS Max. And if you didn't have an iPhone 8 Plus 8 or 10, this will be all new for you. It adjusts to ambient lighting conditions, so it gives you a more warm display. It just makes the display more easy on the eyes in different lighting scenarios. But the biggest thing about iOS 12 has just been its overall performance. No matter what you're doing with this device, it just feels fast and snappy, and that's what you wanna feel all day, every day when you're paying 1K plus for a smartphone. So I'm pretty pleased with the performance on this device. The A12 Bionic chipset is not gonna be taken advantage of that much unless you're doing things like this, for example, AR augmented reality, where you're gonna actually require a processor like the A11 or the A12 to do this super smooth and super efficiently without any crashing or anything like that. So when you're doing stuff like this, the A12 Bionic can come in handy. It is up to 50% faster, this phone in the GPU, and 15% faster than the A11 in the CPU. So this device is, you know, it's definitely gonna be felt if you're doing gaming, movies, like making movies, like making videos, not watching movies, but making movies, gaming like right what you see right here. But if you're just gonna be using this phone just for day-to-day -day applications, you're not really gonna notice much of a difference, but 4K video, heavy use, here's where the A12 Bionic will be worth your time and worth your money. And if not, you might wanna take a look at a different iPhone if you don't think you need all of this power. And if you want those MacBook level Geekbench scores, that comes with this as well. Now, in terms of the camera, it's a 12 megapixel, 2160p camera. That primary lens is at f1.8, 26 millimeters wide, so pretty decently wide. The secondary doubles that distance at 52 millimeter telephoto, f2.4. The major changes here come with the larger sensor. It's a one over 2.55 inch sensor, bigger pixels than ever before and a smart HDR AI processing along with stereo sound for video and all of these enhancements make for a substantial upgrade I feel to the camera on at least the iPhone experience. Now the front facing camera is a 7 megapixel standard lens, it's the same one from before but the smart HDR makes your photos look a little bit more beautified. You've heard of beauty gate, it's basically the stitching together and making your face look a little bit better than maybe what it really looks like. So in terms of the software on the iPhone, you can see that basically going through all these modes, you got slow-mo, video, photo, portrait. It looks the same as just about any other iPhone before. If you've never had an iPhone 8 Plus or a 10, you would see these new portrait modes here though, the natural light, the contour light, the studio, you got your square, you got your pano and much more, but it's a simple iPhone experience. But what isn't simple is how they still make you go into the camera and find every little detail and every little settings outside of the camera UI. But once you're in here, you are presented with that record and stereo sound. You can turn off that smart HDR or leave it on. I would really recommend you leave it on. It's very smart and knows how to get a great photo just pointing and shooting. You can also shoot in different formats, high efficiency, and maybe ones that are more 
compatible. And uh, basically, it's just a really loaded with features camera that's also very simple. Now, viewing photos on here is great, like I mentioned earlier, like better than a Canon camera or a Nikon or anything because the screen's so much larger. But I'm not saying this phone is better than those cameras, obviously not. I'm just saying the viewfinder is large when you are doing things like video. You still have things like burst mode as well. You can take photos from the volume rockers. And on the front camera, it actually performs quite well as well. Portrait mode does come to the selfie cam. So if you're into that, you really will like this depth effect goes all the way down to f1.4. Now it emulates 1.4. It's not in physical reality 1.4 because the lens is f1.8. So that can't be true, but at least it emulates something like f1.4. It goes up to f16. So you can change the blur. And I think a lot of people are going to like that. But go ahead and check out these photo samples and judge for yourself. So one thing that's been very impressive about the iPhone XS Max has been its battery life. It just seems to keep lasting and lasting. I've never had it die on me once. It gets through every single day with ease and it's definitely better than the smaller one by at least an hour or two maybe. Now the iPhone XR might give this one a run for its money but we'll have to reserve our thoughts for then when that does come to the channel. But you can see that the small little charger that comes in the box, this is definitely not cool, especially considering 1449, you know, 1099, 1249 for this phone and this is all we get. So that's a thumbs down but the endurance of this phone is definitely a thumbs up so i think you'll be happy with this device's battery life now when it comes to those speakers i'm not going to play an example here because the audio was too windy out today but you can cover it up on one side and still hear it the speakers sounded very full crisp and clear so if you were looking for one of the best speaker experiences in the stereo sound you're going to love the 10s max no headphone jack there's no real point in talking about it because it doesn't exist here for any of the newer iphones now you can see that the LTE is pretty strong right now in the area that I'm in. I have T-Mobile and I am in Chicago, so this is a major metropolitan area. So we do have very fast speeds and I haven't really noticed too much of a difference between this and prior Qualcomm iPhones, but some people are saying it's a problem, so I'm not gonna dismiss that, I just haven't experienced it. Now, in terms of the phone call quality, it's been pretty good. I had to, It hasn't been blowing me away or anything like that, but 
Calls sound fine. Speaker phone, definitely nice with the stereo speakers. I had one drop call, but I'm not going to write it off just because of one drop call. That could be the carrier and service as well. But on the whole, it's a pretty good phone when it comes to the phone call quality. So I don't think you're going to be disappointed. So pricing, $1,099, 64 gigabyte entry, 256 gig, 1249 and 512 gig, 1449. And we know that these prices do vary depending on the country you're in. Some countries are significantly more to get into this device, but there are ways around it. Sell your old device maybe or, you know, sell off maybe another product you have to buy this product because this, this product is really the top tier of smartphone. If you really like, you know, smartphones and love smartphones and you want everything in one package, this phone really does hit the mark in pretty much every area. I mean, you don't really even need an iPad with this phone. You don't really need a point and shoot camera with this phone. You actually probably won't even need a battery pack because this phone's battery just keeps lasting and lasting. You will need to invest in a fast charger because it takes forever to charge the face id is improved it's much more secure and overall there's not really much to complain about with this phone it's a well-rounded iphone and it's the largest one ever we can see improvements but it's pretty good phone overall did you know that this video was filmed on the iphone 10s to give you an idea of the 4k 60 quality that comes from these cameras and if you found this review helpful entertaining informing click that like button for me questions comments below nick here be sure to be well i will catch you all in the next one and peace Peace.